Hey, this is Chuck from Monocoque Metalworks. Still working on the red car, although it's been quite some time since I posted a video, and I apologize for that. It is now a crisp fall evening, you can see. We're at the home shop, and the last time we did a post on this was late spring. I have had a really busy summer. It's been a lot of family stuff, but also had some injuries at work and we're down on employees. And so it's been a tough time keeping my head above water and keeping everything going. That's all going great. And we are managing to keep our head above water, but it has meant that there hasn't been any time to work on this. But in the past few weeks, I've been starting to get back on this. I've been chipping away at the interior, and you can see that the top looks almost brand new. It was put on sometime before 1971. I just cleaned that off this afternoon. Um, if you look over my shoulder here, Cooper and I, that's my son. He's behind the camera. He and I took out this 67 2 plus 2 for a spin this afternoon. This is kind of like our daily driver company car and then over in the back underneath the lift we have a 66 coupe that car was built in march of 66 we just rescued that a few weeks ago and it's been interesting to look at this and compare it to our roadster over here which was built in august of 66. now what's also interesting is one thing that we're so excited about with the roadster, I'm having trouble figuring out where we're going here, but with this car, and you just film the car while I talk, it, you can see where, you know, she has had a really tough life. And this car didn't live too far away from the roadster in a little bit more of a northern climate. And this car came off the road in 79, whereas the Roadster came off the road in 71. But just the way that it's been treated since then has made a huge difference. This is a car ready for full restoration. And our Roadster over here just needs a little cleanup and she's gonna be ready to go again. So this episode is gonna show you all of the little clips that I did take throughout the summer and into the fall as I worked on the interior. I didn't want to start on the exterior until I had time to finish it. And I also didn't want to continue on the mechanicals. I didn't want to start tearing this thing all apart without time to finish it. So I've been coming out here hour or two at a time, couple afternoons that I could spare and just cleaning up little pieces of the interior. Tonight, I am going to clean up the tonneau cover. And at the end of this video, we'll bring you back to this and you'll know that we're caught up. So enjoy these interior shots. All right, I'm back at it today. And as you can see here, I've pulled the seat belts out. The seat belts are screwed into these holes in the body back there and they're a reinforced area. You can see that someone just kind of cut a hole in there. I believe these are factory seat belts because you can see right down there, see that little, this little wire thing. I don't know if we'll be able to show, but it has the word JAG stamped into it. And that is the factory, see if you can kind of see right there, the way the light works. That's how you know that these are factory seatbelt anchors, at least. And the reason I'm taking them out is because I want to get working on cleaning this interior. And I did decide that I'm going to replace these mats down here with new. They're both ripped. Um, they're very, very brittle. And I do have to get these seat mounting knobs out the fronts can stay in place but the backs and you can see they mounted the seats after they had this piece of hardora in here okay now i have decided that i'm going to pull these mats out here and replace those they're both ripped and i am going to have to do some work getting these broken seat mounting bolts out i did not break those. These were all broken when I got it and the seats were just kind of sitting in there. 
I also want to get the console out. I don't need to take it out to clean it, but I do need to take it out to replace this shift boot. And in an earlier episode, you saw where I actually have another original shift boot that I cleaned up and softened up, and it is not ripped yet, although it does have some cracks in it, so it'll probably rip soon. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to take these seatbelt anchors out. They've got kind of a rubbery uh, gray surface coating there, so I'll probably wrap them with a towel and try to op open them up with an adjustable wrench or something. But that's what I'm going to mess around with this afternoon. I did get new floor mats already, and I'll show you those when I put them in. And it came with nothing in the front. It looked just like this. You're never going to find an original set of good front carpets. So I bought those new as well with the underfelt. Okay, the seatbelt anchors that were screwed into the side of the console... They just came out very nicely. I wrapped a little towel around them and pulled them out with an adjustable wrench. Once I got them spinning, they came right out. And I'll show you those later. But here is the shift boot now screwed right into the gearbox top cover. And you can see that they have a kind of a black undercoating type material on here. And you can see that this has never been off of here. A little bit of chipping. Uh, based on the way that the seatbelt anchors came out, I don't think the console's ever been off or anything like that. This is the little known, I just found out about this not too long ago. This is a pocket for the documents. It actually tucks up under the console, so you have to kind of pull the carpet down to get at it. But this panel has this little pocket in here, and there wasn't any secret stuff in here. That was a little disappointing although there is an original fuse stuck back in there. But we're also gonna pull this off and replace that. Okay, you can see I've taken up this floor mat. And for those of you wondering, the seat mounting studs are definitely put in on top of the Hardora. And I got these front two out okay mostly with <laughs> a lot of wishing and hoping and gentleness. I did snap this one off and I got this one out. But here's your proof that these are on top, although I can clearly see it. You can see they just do a little hole, but they've got kind of a bigger hole. But you can see where it's just kind of, they just kind of aim for it. So I think the bigger holes are so they don't have to you know, they throw this in there, the whole semi line up, then they put these in on top and they don't care if they pinch that piece in the process. And then it looks like these seatbelt anchors were already in there when they put the Hardora down and they cut out to slip this over it. So, and then the other thing is, kind of moving everything around here. You can also see that the under, not undercoating, but the sound deadening material, which is kind of a eighth inch thick tar sticker almost, that went on before the cars were painted. Then they were painted, then the seatbelt anchors went in, then they cut a hole in the seatbelt, in the hard door to go around the seatbelt anchor, put that in, then they put the seat tracks and little knobs on. Okay, now these back two were already broken off. And you can see, I don't know if I can get zoom in a little bit. You can see that someone has already tried to drill this out years ago. That one was broken off and they haven't tried. And then this one here, I just broke off. And then this one, I did get out successfully. Now, unfortunately, back here, we've got a little bit of rust. And I'm hoping it's not too bad. I'm gonna poke around on that a little more. Uh, but that's the only spot of rust I've seen so far anywhere in the floor. 
So with any luck, we can just clean that up some. All right, this morning I am drilling out the two broken off bolts. When I got started here, I had four still in, three broken off, and one out. Well, I did all right yesterday afternoon, and I ended up with six out clean and two broken off, and those were not two that I broke off. And I just got one out next over there in the uh, passenger side. So now we're good to go over there. And this is the last one. And uh, it's being a little tough. You can see I've done a pretty good job of drilling out right down through the center. So I haven't screwed up the threads yet. And I'm trying to grab what's hanging out on the bottom with a pair of vice grips and get it out that way. I was hoping the heat of the drilling would have loosened this up a bit, but it hasn't. So stay tuned. Well, I'm very, very proud of myself today. I got her. And that is all the factory threads there. I didn't manage to screw anything up. You can see I just nicked the edge with a Dremel tool when I was trying to get a nice flat edge to start the drill bit. But I was very, very careful and I just kept stepping the drill bit up just very slightly, a little at a time. And eventually, when I ran a tap through, I managed to chase some of the threads out. So, how did I manage to do this? A lifetime of screwing it up <laughs> and knowing what not to do. So, all eight seat bolts are out and ready. Yes. Okay, the floor is all taken care of and vacuumed out and wiped out. Um, I've put some primer on this spot and this one over here because there was a little rust there. So I scraped it off and I sanded it and wire brushed it and wiped some solvent on it. And then I just dabbed a little rusty metal primer on there with a brush just to make sure things don't get any worse. This is my original shift boot from a different car. It's been cleaned up. You can see it's not perfect. And I've got that on there. And then I did clean up the handbrake lever. I changed my mind. I It looks like this cover's been off. I'm not sure why. Uh, hopefully it was just to maybe fill the oil or mess around with the speedometer angle drive. I don't know. But anyway, next we are going to come over here and we're going to clean up the console. So you can see it's just dusty a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of problem right here, but that'll be okay. That gets covered up with the rubber shift boot. It's a little loose right here. So clean that up a little and maybe glue that back down a little bit. But otherwise, I've already started putting oil on here because that's leather. This is all vinyl, but that the top of the little cubby box between the seats is leather. So you can see it has shrunken over the years, but it is still in really good shape. Usually that looks horrible. So time to clean this up. Okay, I had some time again tonight to do a little more work here. And before I go ahead and finish off the Floors here, I'm going to put the new Hardora in and put the seat mounting knobs back down, get that all done. But before I do all that, I wanted to go ahead and clean everything back here. This has been covered up by the top being down, but I think that the car was stored with the top up, which is actually probably a good thing. But you can see where there is a ton of dust and dirt on this big Hardora piece here. Now I've been working on the back here, that back shelf for about an hour, just spraying and scrubbing and wiping and scrubbing. It, it looks dirty and you can see here that it's nice and clean up here versus down here and still a little wet. And this looks a little dirty, but it is a lot dirty. And I'm gonna show you guys what happens. This is a mixture of uh, simple green and water 
you spray it on there. Sorry about that. And as soon as you start scrubbing, you see the brown coming out. See, it's real brown. And it takes four or five scrub and wipes to get this all out of there because this is kind of a, a grain surface. And I guess that dirt is really down in there. These little angry holes here are from the factory because those are factory seat belts. And we already showed you before, this is the little factory lead and wire seal. It does say Jaguar on it, even though it's very hard to film. But that's what the factory did. They just kind of cut that hole in there and put them in. So I'll do a little, I'll do another update here in a little while and I'll kind of, I'll do half and you can see the before and after here on this surface. It's a little harder to see up there. I'm done all that. And then you can see where, because of the way it was sitting, you know, the, the dust and dirt didn't settle on that vertical part, just the horizontal part. Okay, I guess it's been about a half hour or so, and I've done this half here, and you can see it's a big difference. Now, it's not quite as nice when it dries off, and so um, you can kind of see up in there, it's still not quite right. But <clears throat> when it's wet, it looks great. So if we can just kind of put some kind of I don't know, protectant on it. I don't like Armor All, but there's like a satin finish uh, interior spray you can use and all that that seems to kind of leave this type of finish. So we'll see what we can do. Right now, we're just trying to get the dirt out. I don't want to re-dye any of this stuff. So if we can just kind of clean it and give it kind of a wettish appearance, that will probably do the trick. These little spots here... I'm pretty sure this is gum, you know, chewing gum. I picked at it a little bit and I tried some goo gone, but I don't want to get too crazy on it. You can see when you zoom in, it really, it cleans up pretty good. So now we got to do this other side. Okay, there it is, clean and dry. You can see I've still got my whatever. I think it's gum. Tried a couple different things to get it off and nothing happened. So I'm not going to go crazy on it because I don't want to put something on it that removes the coloring from this Hardora or melts the Hardora or whatever. So gives it a little character. I got the rest of my life to figure out what it is and how to get it off. And you can see that I used a lint brush on the carpet and wow it really came up nice i mean it looks brand new so things are looking good in here so now i'm going to try to put some type of little bit of like a vinyl protectant on it and see if that uh you know brightens it up a little bit and these are the new hardora pieces for underneath the seats I'm trying to keep everything original but as you can see, and I think I already showed this in an earlier video, these are the old ones and they're really hurting. Um, you know, I mean, they're really bad over in there and this one's torn and that. And so since this is completely under the seat, I decided to go ahead and replace those for now. But I haven't thrown out anything that... It's coming off the car. I got a whole box of things that came off, like the felt underneath the door. See, this door panel is cleaned and back on. And I didn't save the cardboard. It was all crumbly. But I did save the little piece of felt that was under there. And whatever I can save that I have to replace. It's a pretty small box. So here, we'll throw this in here and see what the comparison is. Yeah, see, it's just a little bit shinier and newer looking. And actually, see, this is where you need to look at stuff and say, all right, well, is, is the grain exactly the same? It's pretty close. So, there you go. Let's see if we can just gloss that up a little bit with just some protectant.
Okay, I put some interior vinyl protectant on it. It looks pretty good. But what's really cool is that... How am I going to pick this up? Yeah, you can see the pattern in it from the manufacturing. You see those, like, diagonal lines? Look at that. That's pretty cool. And there's a bunch of other shadows. Look how the, the camera kind of changes when you zoom in. But that's pretty cool. I never saw that before. You just catch it in just the right light. It's kind of got that pattern in it. So we're looking real good here. And I'm documenting. I mean, it looks brand new now. So that's one of the reasons this is all getting documented. Because I, I think a lot of people just won't believe that it's original. And then you can pick up little things like over here. You can see how that vinyl covered steel panel does not quite match the inner wheel arch. And this is just all, you know, how it is. All right, it's the next afternoon and Things worked out pretty well last night. Got this all cleaned up. I just threw these new pieces down there under the seats just for now to see how they looked. And this protectant that I put on really dried up some. So I don't know, I'll probably, probably have to keep putting some of that on. This afternoon, I'm gonna try to clean the top. Now, this is not the original top. It looks like Bill either put this on himself or had somebody put it on. It's not the most perfect job in the world. This will probably have the top down most of the time. And it has a really nice tonneau cover with it that's original. So, but I'm just going to leave this on here. I'm going to clean this up. Uh, this will probably clean up really nicely because it's like a vinyl. So we'll just vacuum this out, clean this up next. All right, there it is, all cleaned up. And I smeared a little matte finish protectant on it. This stuff kind of dries up and it looks like it's not even there. So I don't know if that's good or bad or what, but there you go. Like I said, that is not original, but it dates back to 1971 or earlier. And the rear window cleaned up pretty nice. And so now we're going to go ahead and do that to no cover. So I'll pull, I got to clean off my bench over there. And I'll pull that out and uh, give you a look at what it looks like now, which is actually pretty good. And then we'll clean it up. Okay, this is the original tonneau cover. It was in the boot of the car when we picked it up. It is correct, of course, for a 66. You can see it's got this tan piece on the inside. These are the clips that clip it right behind um, where the top comes down to meet the rear upper tonneau above the boot. See, I know, the, I know the sheet metal panels. It's this stuff that I get lost on the names. But you can see it's got a mold on it all around on the vinyl. We won't clean this. It's almost like a sailcloth kind of on the inside. Um, we won't clean this because... This is where if we do try to clean it or get it wet, you're going to get water stains. So this will just stay the way it is, and we will gently clean all of this. We'll do what we can here. This this was The boot was kind of apart a little bit, and the covers were off, and then so there may be some old gas on this. But then I think the top part here is going to look perfect. It's going to look just like the top. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, here's what we've got with just an initial wipe with a wet rag. And you can see here, there's some kind of stain. I don't know if that'll come off. There's something here. There were little specks of white paint um, in a couple different places on the car. And some I've been able to just kind of pick off as little droplets and some I haven't. Um, and they show up more when it's dry than when it's wet or has like a protective coating on it. So anyway, that's that's wet and wiped off. Now we're gonna use some cleaner here and uh, just kind of scrub it up as best we can, get some of that dirt out of the nooks and crannies. All 
All right, I meant to do a half dirty, half clean, but I forgot. So here it is all cleaned up. I've been using a lot of simple green for this. Now this is not full strength. This is probably, oh, I don't know, maybe that much in there and then the rest filled with water. So it is diluted down. The simple green will be rough on some dyes. It doesn't really hurt this vinyl but it'll take the dye off leather and you just want to test it in a small place and be careful. So I've been using it diluted and just being real careful that way. We got a couple spots that didn't come out um, and that's fine. You know, we got some black there, but overall this is in great original shape. It does still smell like old gas a little bit, but it cleaned up really, really well. And so we're now just going to put some kind of little protectant on it. And I have actually been using something relatively cheap, which is turtle wax inside and out protectant. Uh, I don't get anything from turtle wax. I think that was like three bucks. And you know, it's pretty benign. If it turns out to not really do much, that's fine. It'll wipe off and we'll use something else. But for now, that glosses it up a little bit and at least puts something on there. So we are all done. The tonneau cover.